As a military column rolled toward Moscow in Russia's first internal rebellion since the 1990s, all of the world's attention was on the Wagner Group. From the bloody battle of Bakhmut in Ukraine to a massacre in Mali and booby-trapping civilian neighborhoods with landmines in Libya, the Kremlin-linked paramilitary force has been at the forefront of conflicts around the world. Known for its brutal tactics and recruitment of prisoners, the Wagner Group has also gained attention for co-founder Yevgeny Prigozhin's provocative statements, which have now escalated to an open conflict with Russia's official military command. Yet, a closer look at the company reveals not just a mercenary company, but a complex organization involved in security, resource extraction, and financial operations spanning the globe. The Wagner Group's murky origins can be traced to Dmitry Utkin, a Russian military intelligence officer turned private military contractor. Believed to harbor Nazi sympathies, Utkin reportedly chose the name Wagner as a reference to Adolf Hitler's favorite composer, Richard Wagner. Private mercenary groups are technically illegal under Russian law, but Prigozhin found a way around that. A restaurateur whose catering contracts with the government made him one of the country's most powerful oligarchs and earned him the nickname Putin Chef, Prigozhin serves as a link between the Wagner Group and the Kremlin. While the group uses Russian military bases, vehicles and equipment, their unofficial status has allowed Russia's government to maintain plausible deniability of their actions. The Wagner Group emerged in 2014, fighting alongside pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine's Crimea and Donbas regions. Since then, it has expanded its operations to more than two dozen countries. The group has played a prominent role in Russia's military support of Bashar al-Assad's government in Syria's civil war, as well as intervening on the side of General Khalifa Haftar's forces in Libya, where Wagner troops have been linked to the use of internationally banned landmines. But its activities have expanded to other countries on the African continent, where it has promised security and training services for a number of governments while also being accused of committing atrocities. In Sudan, the Wagner Group trained and assisted government soldiers as longtime President Omar al-Bashir brutally suppressed pro-democracy protests. It has continued to work with the military since it deposed Bashir in a 2019 coup. The group has also been accused of supplying weapons to one of the warring parties in Sudan in 2023. In the Central African Republic, Wagner has thrown its support behind President Fastana Khanj Touadera in the country's decade-long civil war, during which its troops have been accused of massacring civilians, rape, looting and bribery. In Mali, which has battled an extremist insurgency since 2012, the Wagner Group took advantage of a military coup to enter the country in 2020 with troops, equipment and advisors. Since then, it has been implicated in atrocities in the town of Mura, in which hundreds of people were executed. And in Mozambique, Wagner was contracted to help fight an Islamic insurgency near the Tanzanian border, only to withdraw after suffering heavy losses due to a lack of local expertise. The Russian government often refers to its interventions both at home and abroad as part of a battle against terrorism, but the Wagner Group's activities further a range of Russian interests. Revitalizing Cold War era relationships with developing nations helps Russia expand its geopolitical influence, hampering international efforts to condemn its invasion of Ukraine and enforce sanctions. Wagner also helps Russia materially. In exchange for its military assistance, Wagner has secured stakes in oil and gas fields in Syria and Libya, gold mines in Sudan and diamond mines in the Central African Republic, with the contracts often given to shell companies linked to Progosian. These businesses help Russia replenish strategic reserves while under sanctions. They also allow Wagner to finance activities beyond the battlefield. Prigozhin has been linked to the Internet Research Agency believed to have been behind Russian attempts to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The Wagner Group has also waged information warfare in its host nations. The French military accused it in April of attempting to stage a massacre in Mali and blame France for civilian deaths. Despite global condemnation and impending sanctions on its international activity, Russia and the Wagner Group are seen in Africa as viable alternatives to partners like France and the United States. Part of this is due to lingering resentment and mistrust rooted in the legacy of colonialism. Western aid is also widely perceived to come with conditions requiring unpopular economic adjustments and government reforms that leaders see as meddling in their internal affairs. By contrast, 
Russia offers a straightforward exchange without inquiring about corruption or human rights. As economic crisis, domestic turmoil and the war in Ukraine have led some Western nations to decrease efforts in Africa, Russia has jumped at the chance to fill the gap. But Russia's recent internal unrest shows the dangers of relying on largely unaccountable private military forces. Both at home and abroad, a deal with the Wagner Group today could lead to instability tomorrow.